system fan replacement for Mac Mini 1283. The tools we're going to need are tweezers, a prying tool, and a screwdriver kit with a flathead and a Phillips head screwdriver. Go ahead and start by flipping over the Mac and prying into the seam on the right side. We're going to need to pry in from both sides, so use the flat-headed uh, screwdriver as a prying tool to come in from the opposite side. Working your way and applying pressure, we need to kind of bend the case a little bit and push out the, uh, f the frame. Once you have that separation, you can just push it apart and you can see it was being held in by pressure with plastic uh, pieces on all sides. We'll first need to remove three antennas. They're held in with pressure, so by just gently pushing up on them, they should be able to unclip. Don't lose the spring that's underneath. Go ahead and pick that up and put it over to the side. Now peel back that little guarding tape. Move on to the next antenna, the gray one. Go ahead and pull that up as well and move that spring over to the side. Flip the Mac Mini around and get to the third antenna. This one we'll have to push in with our fingers and squeeze together as we pull up on it. And that should come right out like that. And this third spring. Okay, we'll need to remove these four uh, Phillips head screws that are uh, securing the DVD drive, optical drive. Okay, there's one there that we'll need an adapter for, and one right there. Go ahead and remove those four. Use an extension to remove that one right there if you need. Go ahead and remove these two. Removing these four screws, uh, now we need to go ahead and Peel back and disconnect that bridge ribbon cable right there. Gently disconnect that. Peel back that little piece of tape. And now the fifth and final screw uh, right behind there. That will release the DVD drive. And that should be able to come out, slide out just like that. With the DVD dri drive removed, we need to remove the hard drive bracket uh, enclosure. It's being held in with four Phillips head screws. You shouldn't need an adapter for this, a uh, standard reach screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver should be able to get those. Go ahead and remove those four Phillips head screws as shown. With those four screws removed, go ahead and start prying and lifting up. Uh, that hard drive and bracket has a bridge that connects it to the logic board, so just gently push it up. One of the antennas might pop out, uh, like this red one that I just moved. It popped out during the uh, removal. So to get the system fan out, we're going to need to peel back uh, some of the guarding tape and go ahead and disconnect this blue cable right here that's connected to the back of the uh, hard drive bridge. Go ahead and uh, disconnect that, trace it out. That's the uh, cable that's attached to the fan. The fan is screwed in with two Phillips head screws. Go ahead and remove those. And you can just peel it right back. And that's it, it's out. Fan installation. Place the fan back into its socket. Uh, make sure it's nice and tight. Go ahead and secure the two Phillips head screws. Now trace out that cable, tuck it in uh, along the side there, and then go ahead and plug it back, uh, gently pushing it into its socket, make sure it's a nice and firm connection. Let's reconnect these three tricky antennas. The blue one is reconnected first, and it goes all the way on the left side. And then the red one goes all the way on the right side. Lay them down in the orientation like you see here. Now on the bottom right side, reconnect the gray one and lay it down next to the blue one. Now let's put the hard drive bracket back over it. Make sure that you have enough antenna slack for all of the antennas to reach the places where they get clipped in. Make sure to check that that connection bridge 
is plugged into the logic board and you have a nice and solid connection go ahead and secure it with the four Phillips head screws uh, double check to make sure that none of the antennas became disconnected when you place this back let's slide in that DVD drive into the socket make sure that that's nice and connected the first thing we want to do is we want to secure that rear Phillips head screw so that the uh, drive is nice and flush with the IO bridge while we work on the rest of the connections go ahead and plug back in that uh, ribbon cable that connects the IO bridge uh, to the uh, DVD drive okay it's plugged into two places go ahead and secure that once that's secure go ahead and put back the two Phillips head screws on the left side and then the two Phillips head screws on the right side of the DVD drive that last fourth screw might need a uh, extension socket okay now let's place back the antennas go ahead put that spring back and load that first Bluetooth blue antenna it just should clip right in okay now place back the spring and the gray antenna and that should click right in as well let's flip it around and the third and final antenna let's go ahead and place back that spring this is the one where you have to pinch together with your fingers and then clip on top so go ahead and pinch that and then push down on it there we go that's a lock okay go ahead and place back uh, the cover make sure to align everything once everything is uh, nice and aligned go ahead and apply uh, a good amount of pressure to lock everything into place 